I designed $10 torque limiting coupling to replace $150 coupling. Wow, that's 94% in savings. But does this coupling actually work? Let's find out. So how exactly do we reduce the cost from $150 to $10? Unfortunately for us, we need to redesign the torque limiting coupling from the ground up. This is because the $150 torque limiting coupling is made from custom metal parts. This is why it is so expensive. FYI, this is why it also works so great. So here are some design guidelines to guide us in the right direction. 1. Eliminate all custom metal parts. 2. Use standard hardware for metal parts as much as possible. 3. Use custom 3D printed parts only as necessary. Before we begin the coupling design, we need to determine the specifications the coupling needs to meet. Here we have a 12 volt DC high torque motor with a 6 mm diameter shaft. It is gear reduced to 20 revolutions per minute speed and rated to 1.5 newton meter torque. All of this boils down to the following critical information for our torque coupling. 1. The slipping torque needs to be up to 1.5 newton meters. 2. The maximum speed is 20 revolutions per minute. 3. Interface to the coupling is a 6 mm diameter shaft. Finally, we are ready to begin the design. But what standard hardware will we need? Let's start on the left side of the torque limiting coupling, the motor side. The motor has a 6 mm diameter shaft, so we need a metal coupling with a 6 mm internal bore to connect to the motor shaft. But what type of coupling do we need? Here's the key. The next consideration is whether the part to the right of the motor shall be a metal part or a 3D printed plastic part. Most likely the part on the right will be 3D printed plastic, so we will want to spread out the torque load as much as possible. This means we should go with the flange coupling. Let's select this flange coupling. Second. Let's move to the inside of the torque limiting coupling, the mechanism itself. This is where we will use friction force to create the slipping torque. The cheapest method is to use a screw to clamp two parts together, creating controlled friction between the two parts. Most likely the clamp parts will be 3D printed plastic parts. Let's start with this hex head screw. Lastly, let's move to the right side of the torque limiting coupling, the output shaft. The output shaft has a 6 mm diameter. The inside mechanism has as a screw. So at this point we will need to find a coupler to join a screw to a 6 mm output shaft. This hex coupler is a great place to start. One side is threaded and one side is a 6 mm diameter bore. Now that we selected the main hardware, let's design the rest of the mechanism. First we need an adapter to attach to the flange coupling. This is also the same adapter that the hex screw will clamp down to create the friction force. So on the other side we will have a clearance hole for the hex screw. Second, we need to design how we will clamp the adapter with the screw. The hex head will be on the left side of the adapter. On the right side we will use a hex nut. Unfortunately the hex nut doesn't have a large surface area, which means it is a poor surface to generate a friction force that can be used for the slipping torque. So we will add the flat washer to provide a good surface area with the adapter to generate the friction force. Coming back to the left side, the hex head also doesn't have a large surface area. Now we can simply add a flat flat washer just like we did on the right side. However, I want to make sure that the slipping always occurs between the washer and the adapter, not the hex head and the washer. So we will design a custom washer that wraps around the hex head, ensuring that this washer always rotates with a screw. For now, just remember that this will provide a more consistent slipping torque. Third, we need to lock the screw to the coupler. We will use another hex nut as a jam nut. Finally, we now have a complete design. Let's assemble it and see how it works. Here we run into our first problem. The torque coupling doesn't maintain the slipping torque. Specifically, the nut that is supposed to clamp the adapter gets loose. Thankfully, this will be easy to solve. All we need is another hex nut and use it as a jam nut. This will keep the hex nuts locked in place so that the slipping torque can be maintained. Let's give this a try. All right, the jam nut is working. But before we get too excited, we need to confirm that this torque limiting coupling 
can provide the slipping torque of up to 1.5 newton meters. Now it's time to set the slipping torque to 1.5 newton meters. Test the slipping torque with the torque wrench 5 to 10 times. In this case, we need to decrease the slipping torque slightly. Loosen the jam nut, then loosen the clamping nut slightly. Retighten the jam nut. Test the slipping torque with a torque wrench 5 to 10 times and repeat this until getting to 1.5 newton meters. Now that the torque is set, test the slipping torque 30 times to get statistically significant result. Now that the slipping torque is set, let's connect this torque limiting coupling to this motor and see if it works. First, install the motor into the mount. Then, slip the torque limiting coupling into the motor shaft. Now, tighten the set screw against the flat on the motor shaft. Then, connect the motor to the battery pack. And now, attach a wrench to the torque limiting coupling. Lay it on one side of the table. Power the motor. All right, it's working. The motor is still spinning, but the torque limiting coupling is now slipping and the wrench is staying in place. And then, the torque limiting coupling re -engage as soon as the wrench is free to spin. Let's double check that the coupling works in the opposite direction. And would you look at that, it works just as great. But there is still one big problem with this torque limiting coupling. The slipping torque varies by 16%. That's a lot. So here is a thrust bearing and a Belleville washer. Watch this video where we will greatly reduce the slipping torque variation. 